So that was an explanation of the Navier-Stokes equation. You might agree that they seem to apply some fundamental laws of physics to fluids and are very important to the simulation of fluids. But the equations only give us the specification, not the implementation. This means that while the equations tell us what rules or fluid simulation should follow, they are not super helpful in telling us what the simulation process actually looks like. The equations we showed in the previous video may seem a little daunting, but we don't actually need to solve them. For fluid simulations, we can use the computer to make approximations of the fluid that look realistic enough for applications rather than calculating the fluid exactly. In this follow-up video, using our knowledge from the first video, we will cover the actual simulation process. So there are a few different ways to represent a fluid in a computer simulation. The first one, a Lagrangian simulation, is a simulation that is composed of individual particles which interact and move around each other to produce a fluid. The other type of simulation, a Eulerian simulation, uses a fixed grid of attributes which represent the average of all the imaginary particles that would be in each grid square. First is the Lagrangian approach, which is what you are probably the most familiar with, and is the more intuitive between the two. It treats the fluid like a particle system, as if the fluid is made up of a bunch of small particles. For each individual particle in the fluid, the simulation calculates each one's velocity, pressure, and temperature as a function of time. Since we need to calculate the variables for each particle as a function of time, a simulation which uses the Lagrangian approach must calculate the attributes of each particle for every time interval. You may have noticed that particle-based fluid simulation seems like rendering a bunch of fluid particles moving around and interacting with each other. However, we don't always render fluids as a bunch of particles interacting with each other. A lot of times, we form a triangle mesh around it and then render that triangle mesh with ray tracing, reflections, and refractions so it looks like fluid. A common method of Lagrangian simulations is smooth particle hydrodynamics, or SPH. I'll now explain how SPH works. For each fluid particle, the method scans for nearby particles and finds all the fluid particles around it within that certain neighborhood. Then it will apply forces between these particles onto other particles due to the presence of these particles around it. These forces are computed using the Navier-Stokes equations. Once you derive the force formulation, it's just a matter of finding the neighboring particles around that particle and applying these forces. Then you step through your time step and you get your SPH simulation. Instead of using individual particles to solve the Navier-Stokes equations, an alternative technique would be to solve the differential equations using a grid-based approach. This brings us to Eulerian simulations, which uses a different way to simulate fluids. Instead of tracking each particle, it looks at fixed points in space and tracks how the measurements of fluid properties at those points change over time. Since the fluid is likely flowing past those fixed points, we can see the measurements of fluid properties including density, velocity, temperature, and other quantities change. For instance, if a warm fluid moves past a fixed point followed by a cold fluid, the temperature at the fixed point will decrease even though the temperature of any individual particle in the fluid is not changing. Likewise, the fluid variables can be changing within the fluid as a whole, affecting the measurements at the fixed point. For example, if the fluid everywhere cools down, the temperature measured at the fixed point will also decrease. We can think of the fluid as a set of cells in a grid instead of individual particles. Each cell contains a number of particles, each with different properties. These properties can include density, velocity, temperature, and other quantities. For each cell, we calculate all of the variables of the fluid using the average of the particles in the fluid within that cell. This is much easier to compute because we are approximating a fixed grid as opposed to an arbitrary number of moving particles. We can visualize the difference between the Lagrangian and the Eulerian viewpoints by doing a weather report. 
In the Lagrangian viewpoint, we would be in a balloon floating along with the wind, measuring the pressure, humidity, and temperature of the air that is flowing alongside us. However, in the Eulerian viewpoint, we would be stuck on the ground, measuring the pressure, humidity, temperature, and temperature of the air that is flowing past us. We see that both approaches measure how the conditions are changing, but the measurements can be completely different as they are measuring the rate of change at two different points of reference. Back to the approaches used in fluid simulations. On the left, we see an example of a Lagrangian fluid simulation compared to the Eulerian simulation, which is on the right. The Lagrangian viewpoint corresponds to a particle system with or without a mesh containing the particles. However, the Eulerian viewpoint uses a fixed grid that does not change in space, even as the fluid flows through it. Now, grid-based fluid simulations are really good because they can solve the Navier-Stokes equations efficiently, but then they have issues like sometimes losing volume and mass. Particle-based simulations don't have that problem, but then they have issues with compressing and expanding. So this brings us to hybrid simulation techniques. Hybrid simulations try to combine the strengths of Lagrangian and Eulerian methods. In a hybrid fluid simulation, there will be a grid, but also a bunch of particles defined inside of the grid. The way this works is that the method is going to solve for some things using particle-based representation and solve for other things using grid-based representation. For instance, advection, which is the motion of the fluid mass, is going to be solved using the particle-based formulation. Then, this means computing the velocities of the particles at each time step, and then projecting them onto the grid. When all of the velocities are projected onto the grid, it's going to form what's called a velocity field in 3D. Then, other properties of fluid can be solved using the grid-based representation, which will update the properties of the particles and are projected backwards. This is pretty much how a hybrid simulation works. Now, I'm going to show you an example of a hybrid fluid simulation. In this video, we have covered a few different approaches to fluid simulations. Now, you can use the information you have learned to generate realistic looking fluids.